Guys and girls, welcome back to the lab. Excuse any errors or anything, I'm a bit tired and I'm just going to smash this one out so I can go inside and have a cold drink. I've uh, been working most of the day today and all day yesterday. There was not much that I felt like showing you yesterday because you know, wiring up these things, it takes time, it gets messy. You get to a point where you've got stuff everywhere there's labels there's wires all directions there's tools lying around and everything and it's one of those things where maybe if you're baking a cake and you've got all the ingredients already in in the bowl and it's it's not in the oven you're not gonna take a spoonful of it and have a taste are you it's not gonna be great so it's a bit like that it would have basically been just embarrassing and de detrimental to myself to show you that in between bits i show you the start of the job i think you could see where it was all heading so beyond that point there's i don't know 15 hours in it or something like that i did get a little bit carried away that's not unusual it's supposed to be doing just the ecu in here right and wiring it up to the engine and then i've got the sidetracked and some of the wires came this way and some of the wires went as far as the accelerator pedal and to these relays in the front here so it's kind of almost turning into a complete rewire of the car to a degree there's some stuff that won't be replaced because there's no sense in doing that but there's a lot of stuff that has been replaced so i think that's got to be better so far we're not done we're not finished typically we don't run race cars with wires hanging out of windows and doors missing and stuff so don't be thinking this is finished product there's a bit to tidy up here none of that that's there has been changed at all that's basically exactly where it was except for a couple of wires here that you can see these orange wires there's a logic with that that i'll explain in a second We've still got to mount our map sensor somewhere. We've got a Link 3 bar map sensor. Awesome little beastie. I went with, I think I already explained that. We went with 3 bar because that gives us maybe 28 psi of boost in. I really shouldn't be going more than that anyway. So let's not be tempted if we had a sensor that could run higher. And we decided that um, 30 psi would be good. Uh, we might find out that those pistons don't like 30 psi and then we'll, we'll have a big problem on our hands so there's a plug behind there that i really probably should have moved over here i left it there trying to kind of hide it but i don't think it's working out because what's happening is you end up with a, a harness hanging out in the breeze there this is all going to be wrapped and everything as i've said earlier and, and in fact i said this was going to get covered in a sheath and it will and this is mostly a new harness now and the reason for that we've got our two and a half meter link ecu harnesses that are pre-terminated and got wires in them already and a lot of this stuff to control well all the stuff to control everything in the front of the car goes through a deutsch connector that's behind the harness here that one there stuck the way there so a lot of the wires that just come out of the plug on the ecu either plug around the corner to there and that's as far as they go and that might be let's just grab grab the destruction manual there let's say we've got um auxiliary one where's auxiliary one you guys have probably spotted it already and i can't see it i'm a bit tired there it is it's kind of almost in the middle of your screen there. Auxiliary one. It's orange and black. I have no idea what it's actually running. Let's just assume that's running the engine fan. That'll do. It's probably not. It's probably running VVT solenoid or something like that, but whatever. So it would come out of the plug on the ECU and then go around a little corner and plug into the Deutsch connector and it'd be orange and black. Cool. Good. And then the original wire that was in the car that ran all the way up to the front that would go to another connector and then through to the relay was probably yellow or blue or red or some other color that was maybe white so if you're trying to trace faults and stuff later on that 
actually makes that a little bit harder. So I use the remainder of the harness and replace these wires that go through to the front of the car. I've done that with as many things as practical, including the pedal position sensor wires over on our e-throttle pedal over there, and a few other bits and bobs. And the advantage of that, it's a nicer wire than what was in the car. It's had um, a lot of that stuff was this, I think I mentioned it before, it's a stainless steel wire, I think. It's very, very hard core in it, and it work hardens and it breaks quite easily. And we've had a number of these terminals snap away inside our blocks here that had that style of wire on there. So I'm trying to de delete as much of that as possible. That's why these are all up here. This is our oil pressure sensor and our fuel pressure sensor wires. And they've got to go. So I've got to get new plugs to go. There's one there actually it has got the tape on it, see? Uh, new plugs to go on our sensors so I can terminate them properly and not have any joins, any solder joins anyway, anywhere in that system. Pretty important, both of those. The car will run fine without them, but it will um, obviously trip faults if it decides that it's getting a, a message that makes sense and it believes it. It will run rev cut limiters and uh, rev limiters rather, etc. So that's not a good thing. Right, so the wires that we ran through here are considerably smaller than the link stuff that's on the link harness is i just like them more they're a nicer wire these these things here probably we could measure it with the why don't we let's go and get the calipers and measure it this is the old wire that was in the car not the entire harness just some pieces that were replaced way back when the original ecu went in 2.29 outside diameter this is the these are the leftovers so far from our link harness um, 1.65 so yeah I know there's advantages and there's disadvantages right so this has got more insulation on it it's probably rated to a higher temp potentially um, but as I said the the wires on the inside actually tend to break quite easily might be able to show you that might be quite tricky to do with one hand. Can I get that? I got it. Did we strip it? We did. That's not bad. That's good. Right. This will be the hard part. Can we actually hold that in the vise and prove my point? I should plan these things in advance rather than just trying to smash it out on camera and everyone's going get on with it clean right so that's held there if i grab that jiggle it around it doesn't actually take very long it's going to make a liar of me no they're broken already i can feel it that's the insulation that's holding that so the wires are gone busted now that's an extreme example you wouldn't normally do that um we'll have something in that sort of situation this is probably not going to strip just to embarrass myself made a liar of me similar sort of distance in there I'm probably going to end up getting a blister before we break any of those wires. They're all bent, bent and twisted. Starting to break there. And there we go. There they go. Good example? Bad example? Not sure. Probably a bad example, probably not an experiment that played out like I wanted it to, but in the car, we've not had any of this style of wire break off in terminals. However, the, that's my test light. <laughs> the other stuff, which I've lost, 
There it is. This stuff here. Um, yeah, we've had problems with it. Bonnet's coming along. Had it in the sun. It's getting harder. I still need to put some reinforcing behind it. Uh, one of the viewers has got some foam. It's in Auckland. This is the biggest problem. We're just going to look at how we can possibly get that here to Hamilton. And then I'll be able to finish this off. It's not really a priority. But I don't want it to drag on to the point where it's um, time to go racing. We don't have a bonnet for the car. Or a splitter. Or a number of other things. Maybe some new tyres. Or have the car tuned. Etc. Etc. That does look better, eh? It's got to be better. Right, that's enough of me inside cold drink. I'll carry on with this tomorrow. I'll get some more pins for my Deutsch connectors and we'll, um, we'll shuffle a few things around a little bit more. Um, and we'll get those plugs for our two sensors on the engine. I'll mount the map sensor. And then we're at the point where we need to get the ECU unlocked, load a tune into it. Then we go through and we have to calibrate the map sensor, calibrate the pedal position sensor, calibrate the throttle position sensor, check that the injectors are all on the right wires, check the coils are all on the right wires, test the VVT solenoids to make sure they are working correctly. Then we can look at, and then we have to set the timing. And then we have to calibrate the VVT system to get that calibrated set right, which actually in the past, way back when we first got this car running, was not done properly. Um, or either maybe it was, and then when I transferred everything across into the rear wheel drive block, potentially there was something that was different there, and then the system was not calibrated right, and one cam was running different to the other, and all sorts of things were not right. So, those are all things that you have to go through as a process, sorting it all out before you start the car, basically. Once that's done, hopefully the tune that's it's not in there, I was going to say the tune that's in there, it's not, it's in my laptop at the moment, will be enough for it to start and run, and we have to get it on the dyno and do the rest from there. Shift cut knob is coming, it's somewhere between Hamilton and Auckland. So we can get that on there, and get on with it. We probably will have enough time. I'll make a new one that we're going to fold. We'll make the thing go proper, proper. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll crack on with it tomorrow. I'm not going to clear coat this. Don't make me clear coat it. That's If you want a clear coated, shiny, beautiful work of art one on there, we're going to have to start again because there's too many defects too many how many defects you know like this too many no that doesn't work does it okay cheers mate